The Seal Test Milk, Cheese, and Ice Cream Divisions of National Dairy present Seal Test Variety Theater with two of Hollywood's great names, Ronald Coleman and Frank Morgan. And here's the lovely star of our your hostess for the next half hour, Dorothy L'Amour. <laughs> Thank you and good evening, everyone. On behalf of Henry Russell and the Crew Chiefs Quartet, I'd like to welcome you to Seal Test Variety Theater and to our distinguished guests, Frank Morgan and Ronald Coleman, a low curtsy and a large thank you for being with us tonight. Dottie, you know there's nothing I wouldn't do for you. <laughs> a beautiful girl like this standing next to him and he wants to do nothing. <laughs> Oh, that was a Lulu, Frank, and rang the bell. And by an extremely strange coincidence, since Lulu Bell happens to be the name of my latest picture, and since Henry Russell and his Dixie Land are ready to play Ace in the Hole from the aforementioned flicker, I'd like to sort of try and sing along with him. Okay, Bix. <laughs> this town is full of guys who think they're awful wise. Just because they know a thing or two You'll meet them night and day Strolling up and down Broadway Telling of the wonders they can do The gamblers and the bookies Keep looking for the rookies Who congregate around the metropole They wear flashy ties and collars They've all got an ace in the hole. Some of them send to their old folks for coin. That is their ace in the hole. Others have friends in the old tenderloin. That is their ace in the hole. They boast of their jewels, how they've outsmarted fools, as if money were life's only goal. But when they're out of stock, they go right back in hot. If they lost that old ace in the hole, yes, if they lost that old ace in the hole. Thank you. Thank you very much. When the history of radio is compiled, there'll be a separate chapter for comedy. Chapter way up in front, there'll be a very special place for our first guest star tonight, Frank Morgan. Well. Thank you. Thank you, Dottie, and it's a pleasure to be here. May I say that you grow more beautiful every day. Oh. And tonight you look like the middle of next week. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Frank, you haven't changed a bit. Well, thank you, and neither of you, my dear. Why, when you sang a moment ago, it was like a chorus of angels strumming their golden harps. Well, it's nice of you to say but I didn't know you were so interested in music. Not interested in music, my dear girl. How could a man lose interest in a subject he's studied since his cradle days? Frank, were you a musician? Oh, excuse uh, the interruption, Dottie, but I just heard Frank's remark about music, and I uh, think I should warn you about his prevarications. Why, Carlton, do you mean to say... Well, of course he doesn't, my dear. He had... Uh, who is this blabbermouth? <laughs> why, this is Carlton Cadell. He announces our program. Well, then why doesn't he announce it and go home? <laughs> now, listen, cowbell. Speak to a man... <laughs> We're talking to a man who for five years was a tunesmith at Schubert's Winter Garden, for six years at Garrick's Brighton Beach, and for one month a grease monkey at Ralph's Lubritorium. <laughs> oh, no, the pep boys have been at my notes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a funny thing, Frank, but I've never heard your name mentioned as a composer. Yeah, nor have I. Quiet, Lippy. <clears throat> It was consummate with my inherent modesty that my most successful compositions were published under assumed names. Under just what names did you publish these hits? Well, Cole Porter, Hoagie Carmichael, Johnny Mercer. <laughs> what about Berlin? Well, I think the Russians should get out. <laughs> Frank, 
Frank, we were talking about music. Yes, we uh, we don't like to doubt you, Frank, but uh, just what songs did you write? Oh, songs. Well, the first one I wrote was Charmaine. Oh, that's a beautiful tune. Oh, thank you. After that, I wrote Diane, but then I made the mistake of writing Margie. Mistake? Yes, she turned the letters over to the D.A., and I spent six months in the... Fe- oh, no! <laughs> Well, I was about to say, my musical career began when I was hired as a singing waiter in a Bowery Rascala. That sounds like the kind of a dive you could sing in. It was not a dive, Dolt. It was a charming, <laughs> informal little bistro. Every Saturday night, a few of the boys would drop over. Faith, and it would have done your heart good to see him laying there. <laughs> What kind of numbers did you sing, Frank? Well, I had my biggest success with a composition of my own. I titled it with a touching brevity. I want to go back to my little grass shack in East Keokuk, South Carolina, where the honeysuckle twines around the doorway if you don't forget to water it blue. <laughs> Another glass of buttermilk, and I'd never have made that one. It took real courage to face that audience night after night. Especially with a song like that. Yeah. Did yeah. you always sing alone? No. In the finale, I worked with a bevy of shape maidens. But in spite of the girls, it was I who carried the show. I was always in there pinching. Punching! <laughs> Now, if you'll excuse oh, just me. Just a minute, Frank. Just a minute. Uh, you're that good. Sing something for us now. Yeah, I'll sing now. No. Well, I have a better idea. Suppose Dottie and I blend our voices in a little duet. Well, at least half of the team will be good. <laughs> Why don't you take your pail and shovel and go fill up Hollywood Bowl? <laughs> Orchestra, Frank? Yes, they can. Yes. <laughs> However, I prefer to sing to the accompaniment of that classic and melodious instrument, the pizzazla. Henry Russell, my pizzazla, if you please. <laughs> well, Frank, that, that pizzazla looks like a straight washboard to me. Well, as a matter of fact, it is a washboard. <laughs> <laughs> yourself on a washboard? Well, now, it's not as ludicrous as it sounds, Dorothy. I'm the only singer alive who ever sang Old Man River and washed his socks at the same time. <laughs> I throw allegro con molto, if you please. I'll be loving you. Always. <laughs> With a love that's true. Always. I'm sure by this time, he'll have this radio. You've got me last talk. Don't go away, because I've been peeking ahead, and I know that Ronald Coleman has something up his sleeve a little later. Get the basket seal test. Like ice cream? Sure you do. But if you haven't tasted seal test, you just don't know how good ice cream can be. Dip into a dish of famous seal test chocolate ice cream, and you'll see what I mean. It's smoother, creamier tasting, and packed with flavor. A rich, delicious chocolate flavor, carefully tested and selected by Seal Test as superior in flavor and quality. Your first smooth spoonful of Seal Test ice cream is better in every way. In rich, full flavor, in creamy, fine grain texture, in pure goodness. Whenever it's ice cream you crave, get the best, get Seal Test. Ladies and gentlemen, when Beethoven was five years old, he composed a symphony. When Schubert was eight years old, he composed a piano concerto. 
When Henry Russell was nine years old, he was in the third grade of PS 182. <laughs> Long assist from the crew chiefs, Hank now plays Somebody Loves Me. Somebody loves me. I wonder who. I wonder who she can be. Somebody loves me. I wish I knew who she can be. Worries me. For every girl who passes me, I shout. Hey, maybe you were meant to be my loving baby. Thank yous. One for Henry Russell and four for the crew chiefs. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dorothy L'Amour, president of the Beverly Hills chapter of the Ronald Coleman Fan Club. And to all you fellow members in the United States and Texas, here he is, the star of the motion picture Double Life Academy Award winner, Ronald Coleman. Thank you, Dottie. Thank you. Ronnie, it's a great pleasure for me to appear with you in Jean Holloway's original sketch, The Pirate of Orleans. Carlton Cadell, while Ronnie and I daub on that last bit of grease paint, will you set the scene? Gladly, Dottie. The place is New Orleans. The time, that period in American history when General Andrew Jackson made a deal with a pirate to help hold the city. It was a glorious victory. And afterwards, the entire city turned out for a grand ball in honor of that pirate, Jean Lafayette. Do tell me something about yourself. Well, now, let's see. Oh, well, there was a time, one time, six or seven months ago, somewhere north of Haiti, very north of Haiti, as a matter of fact, I decided to hunt for treasure on the ocean bed. So I put one knife in my teeth and one in each hand and dove in. I came face to face immediately with six sharks. Oh? Well, what happened? They ate me. Oh. <laughs> Tell you about myself? Well, now, let me see. It was a year or two ago, south of the Canary Islands. Oh, very south of the Canaries, and I defeated an entire native army single-handed. All by yourself? <laughs> oh, Monsieur Lafitte, just imagine. Oh, oh, it was nothing. I picked them up two by two and cracked their heads together. And when the camel got tired of carrying me, I carried the camel. Yes, the Sultan had a harem of 60 wives. I had a thousand and sixty. Oh, oh, oh what a year that was. <laughs> ah, you're lovelier than ever, Constance, my darling. Well, I was beginning to wonder if I was ever to have the pleasure of talking to the Lion of the Evening. I've been hearing stories about you. You have? I understand you defeated an entire native army, single-handed. Oh, I could never lie to you, Constance. It was only a brigade. Mm -hmm. I also understand that once you came face to face with six sharks, and that they ate you. Well, as a matter of fact, it was only one shark, and I ate him. <laughs> and I also understand that you carried a camel. It was a very small camel. And that you had a thousand and sixty wives. Yes, that was one of my bad years. Uh, uh, Constance, uh, this room is tight outside by the water for a moment, maybe? All right. Ah, smell that sea. Oh, smell it. And drink it deep inside you. Savor it and taste it and don't let it get away. 
What do you see when you close your eyes and smell the sea? I see what I've always seen since I first saw you. I see a house somewhere beside it. And I see you. I see little boys with your eyes and your trick of shaking your head when you're angry, banging doors and filling it with laughter. What do you see? I I see sails. Sometimes a sea that's smooth and swelling, and sometimes rough and challenging and ready for a brawl. I see China and the Indies and cargoes of silks and spices. Yes, and I see islands, tropic trees against the yellow moon. I see cliffs where the mountains bend down to see who's coming into the harbor. You smell the sea and you see the ends of the world. I smell it and see home. Yes, and that's the difference between us. So this is where we say goodbye, Constance, my dear. Goodbye? I hope that now that you were pardoned, you'd stay here and settle down. Settle and... down? You, you can't domesticate me like you would a cow or a dog and chain me to a fireplace? Why, I'd be so irritable inside of a week that you'd hate me. Ah, are too wild for cages, my dear, and I'm one of them. Do you love me? Oh, oh, oh Constance, what's the good of that? I'd like to know. You've never said. Yes, I love you. I love you. And I suspect that I'm going to miss you all the rest of my life. But still, you'll leave me. Yes. My ship is riding at anchor now, outside the harbor. Well, if you'd rather have a ship than a wife, I'm going to argue with you. Ah, that's the spirit, my pretty. Snap your fingers at me and tell me to go and be hanged. There are other men just as attractive as you are. Just as attractive? Very debatable, my girl. Oh, I, I loathe you. I, I loathe you. I, I despise good, you. Good, good. I... Now we're on the same affectionate footing as when we met. Oh, come on now. Kiss me goodbye. Uh, no. No, you, you'd better not. No, I, uh, I don't want to make it any more difficult for you to forget me. It won't be difficult. Goodbye. Good night, my beauty. I won't forget you. Goodbye. Oh, I hate that man. I hate him. But, oh, Karamia, how I love him. We are six hours out, boss. Are you not go going to your cabin at all? Oh, what makes you so anxious to get me to my cabin? Well, you have not been in it for a long time. Oh, it's good to get back into a man's world. <laughs> Myself, I like a man's world with women in it. Yes, well, you better keep your mind on your course, Dominique. South, south, east, steady as she goes. Yes, boss. I think I'll go to my cabin for a while. Yes, boss. Well, I'll... Hello. I'll be hanged. Hello, pirate. What are you doing in my quarters? On I'm, my ship? I'm measuring your portholes for curtains. I can't, can't stand windows without curtains. You'll have to, have to make me that one concession. I'll make you no concessions. You're going right back to New Orleans. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm going to China and the Indies, silks and spices. I'm going to see cliffs where the mountains bend down to see who's coming in the harbor. I'm going with you, Jean. But I don't want you with me. Yes, you do. Who are you going to tell about the stars and the winds and the weather? And to brag to about your conquests. Who are you going to kiss, if not me? No one. Oh, I'm, I'm sufficient unto myself. Well, I'll soon put an end to that. I claim this ship as my prize and you as my looty. Booty it is. All right, booty. You're scuttled and you might as well face it. There's a pirate queen on board now, too. And it's a long way back to New Orleans. Oh, well, if I have to put up with it, I suppose I have to put up with it. Put your arms around me and try to look as though you like it. Like it? You're a baggage and a shrew and a bad-tempered scrap of womanhood, if ever there was one. But you do love me. Oh, yes, you can be very sure of that. I do love you. <laughs> Is ever bad, boss? Huh? Wonderful, Dominic, wonderful. <laughs> Then this is a good time to tell you I have a wife with yellow hair down in the old, no? No, this is not a good time. <laughs> then I'll tell you some other time. Huh? Good night, boss. Good night. <laughs> the first time we met, I, I asked you to kiss me and you said no. You'd kiss so many women you were bored with kissing. What would happen this time if I asked you again? Oh, just lift up your chin and see... 
Oh, Jean, you're so wonderful. Well, yes, I am. Yes, I must admit it. I have a good ship and a good crew and a good wife. And shall I tell you something? <laughs> I did it all myself, single-handed. <laughs> Thank you, Ronald Coleman, for giving us that vignette of the romantic Jean Lafitte. And please stand by, because in a moment or two, you're on stage again. Here's good advice that's sure to pay, so listen to what the man has to say. You know what a friend of mine asked me the other day? How can tastes so different? Now, that may sound like a foolish question, but actually it made a lot of sense. Because he was talking about ice cream. And there is a difference in ice cream. You'll realize what a big difference when you taste Seal Test ice cream. It's better in every way. Made with only fresh, top-quality ingredients. Pasteurized for extra protection. Homogenized for fine flavor and smoother texture. Then skillfully blended and frozen the exclusive Seal Test way. There's no ice cream like Seal Test. Try it and enjoy ice cream at its best. <laughs> up on the hit on the list of hit tunes is a new ballad every day i love you just a little bit more henry russell the crew chiefs and i would like to do our bit toward keeping it there every day i love you just a little bit more just a little bit more just a little bit more every day i would want you just a little bit more than I did the day before. You'll never guess how deep my love is, not even in your wildest dream. But just so you'll get it it's clear, compared to my love, my dear, the Mississippi River is just a stream. Oh, every day I love you just a little bit more, just a little bit more, just a little bit more. Every day I want you just a little bit more than I did the day before. Every day I love you just a little bit more. A little bit more. Just a little bit more. And every day I need you just a little bit more than I did the day before. You never will guess how deep my love it is. Even in my wildest but just so you'll get it clear Compared to my love, my dear The Mississippi River is just a stream Oh, every day I love you just a little bit more Just a little bit more A little bit more Every day I want you just a little bit more Than I did the day before Before Yes, every day I love you more Thank you, everyone, and I want also to thank Frank Morgan and Ronald Coleman. It was ever so wonderful having them here. Their appearance tonight contributes to a fine cause, the establishment of the American Federation of Radio Artists Welfare Insurance Fund. And now, Frank! Oh, Frank Morgan! Yes, what is it, Dottie? What are you doing all those limbering up exercises for? Well, haven't you heard about television? I'm getting worried about it. I thought I ought to be ready in case it got, got an offer. Yes, Dotty, and we decided on an original name for him, Gorgeous Frank. Oh, no! <laughs> yes, and I challenge Carlton Cadell for the match. Yes, Dotty, you're looking at Nature Boy Cadell. <laughs> By the way, there's an opening for a slave girl in the act. No, thank you, boys. Well, just to give you an idea of the dexterity, I shall attempt to demonstrate one of my most successful leverage applications. Carlton, would you do me a favor? I'm glad to, Frank. Would you lend me your head? Well, I... Uh... This is going to be good. Yes, thank you. Now, now, the last time I used this particular hold, I applied it on a famous singer. 
Oh, you did? Yes. Ask Nelson Eddy. Now, uh, <laughs> now I shall grasp your family in my strong arms and press. Mm. There. Didn't feel a thing. You sure? Positive. I knew those mail order wrestling courses weren't satisfactory. <laughs> well, suppose I try it on you. Right. Uh. Well, what do you think of that? Huh? I say, what do you think of that? I can't hear a word you're saying. You can't? No, and I won't be able to until you ears back. <laughs> Come on, Frank. I think you need buttermilk. Good night, Dottie. It's been grand being with you. Good night, Dottie. Good night, Ronnie. Good night, Frank. <laughs> And now stand by, everybody. In just a moment, we'll tell you what's in store for next week. Get the test, get seal test. Know what's back in town? Those wonderful seal test strawberry tarts. Your seal test dealer is featuring as the dessert of the month for October. Creamy, smooth vanilla ice cream, as only seal test makes it, topped with crushed strawberries, real juicy ripe berries, and a tempting border of rich whipped cream. Sound good? They're delicious. And here's another Seal Test special that's just too good to miss. A chocolate marshmallow nut sundae at only 25 cents. It's the fountain treat of the month at all Seal Test fountains. Stop by tonight or tomorrow and treat yourself to a Seal Test chocolate marshmallow nut sundae. And for dinner tomorrow, serve the dessert of the month, Seal Test strawberry tarts. They'll make a big hit with everyone. Whenever you crave ice cream. Get the best, get Seal Test. Looks like that old devil curfew is making us close up shop again for tonight. In our new fall catalog, however, we're showing some mighty fine merchandise, which next week is going to include Robert Young and, if you'll pardon the expression, Bob Hope. <laughs> so unless you have to see your mother-in-law off on a train, be sure and be with us again at this same time. Until then, for Henry Russell, the crew chiefs, and tonight's guests, this is Dorothy Lamour saying good night, keep well, keep happy. And keep listening. Frank Morgan will soon be seen with Lana Turner, Gene Kelly, and June Allison in the Metro Golden Mayor Technicolor production, The Three Musketeers. The for Seal Test Variety Theater is written by Howard Harris. And is by Glenn Hall Taylor. Tune in next Thursday at this same time when Seal Test Milk and Ice Cream again presents Seal Test Variety Theater starring Dorothy L'Amour. Seal Test Incorporated and associate companies are divisions of National Dairy Products Corporation. This is Carlton Cadell speaking. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.